Okay. Got some new data as of about six minutes ago. We were at uh, five days of our 33 minutes from launch. Launch was at 1.47, um, five days ago, 1.47 a.m. Uh, Presently, like about six or seven minutes after that, it's 228. That would be seven minutes after this. Okay. Um, so the distance from the Earth to Argus, not just well, it's schematic, but it's not at all stable. Is always. Well, Two hundred eighteen thousand three hundred miles. I'm not going to do an approximate conversion. You can actually do um, exact calculations with this. Uh, it's speed relative to the Earth, but I think this is relative to the Earth. So, telemetry is on the Earth, so I think I'll take care of that. Speed was on. Uh, Thirty-five hundred sixty-seven miles an hour away from the Earth, which gets it out of the way of the moon, which is coming in right heavy at about maybe eighteen hundred miles per hour, and you can calculate this more precisely from the um, exact circumference of the moon's orbit or the exact. Average radius of the moon's orbit, which is around 240,000 miles, 238,000, I think, is yeah, something over 238,000 miles. Um, so that's freely available information. Um, and the distance from Earth to the moon. So I should have labeled the 1800 miles per hour out there as usual. I didn't. didn't do a good, uh, good job with the picture. You made your own picture. 11,515 miles. Um, the distance from the moon. Is changing in an increase. At forty miles per hour. Sixty seconds. Finds the relative velocity of twenty four hundred miles per hour. This is R of R with respect to the moon. Okay. And the way I measured that, I think that's probably plus or minus 1%. So it turned out that that was a very convenient time to, uh, to observe. And yeah, that was very close to this time, probably maybe two minutes after this. Okay, so what questions can we answer here? Well, Is this consistent with the assumption that this vector here from the moon to art is perpendicular to the velocity of art with respect to the moon? 
Um, again, the 3567 was the last crowd with the earth. Um, not too much in 18,000. I've got to check that. Let's see if Actually, I think I've got it wrong. I was envisioning a retrograde orbit around the moon. I need to think it was moving away, especially since it's close to the orbit. But it looks to me as though it's 218,300 miles. It was closing to 240,000 miles uh, some time ago, and I've got to look at that data. Uh, makes me think that maybe um, 35, 67 miles an hour is toward the Earth, maybe at some angle with respect to the Earth. Um, because 1,800 miles an hour in this direction, and 36, 567 miles an hour in this direction. First place, they'll give me a relative velocity of 2,000 miles an hour. And so I'm going to have to think about that a little bit. I'm going to have to think about how fast our has to be moving when it goes into orbit around the moon, which is very easy. Uh, so let's see. I'm not sure it's going to go in the circular orbit around the moon. It was 1,000 miles, diameter of the moon being about 2,000 miles, the radius being about 1,000 miles or about 1,600 kilometers. Okay, think through this in real time. Uh, the only way you're going to have a relative velocity of 2,400 miles per hour is if art is moving toward. Away from the moon. Yes. So Park is moving at 3,600 miles an hour this way. Moon moving at 1,800 miles an hour this way. Uh, it would be proceeding from moon at about 1,800 miles an hour, proceeding from moon at about 2,400 miles an hour, which means it's moving at an angle that probably can, it really can't be a right angle. Um, okay, I'm going to visualize it. No. Uh, now, the speed relative to the moon is just going to be the Pythagorean resolution of these two speeds. It's going to be in the over 4,000 miles an hour, and it's not. So, again, I conclude that art is moving mostly away from the moon at this point. So that the direction that the thrusters fired in, and they fired at a time when the arc was barely moving away from the Earth. It was all it was practically stationary in its distance from the Earth. That was in an elliptical orbit, so it had uh, some velocity in this direction. Uh, so I got out of the math for a Moon was approaching Art, Artemis. Now it's moving away from Artemis. Uh, so I'm, I'm guessing the velocity is like this. 
this, this, so this is velocity of the moon, the speed of the velocity vector for the moon, and the velocity vector for art, so that velocity vector for art relative to the moon will be like this, shorter than the velocity of art uh, that's greater than the velocity of the moon. It might be pretty close. That might be pretty close to some dimension. Uh, this vector should be about two thirds of the length of this one. Okay. Now you can work that out. And of course, I guess it'd be easier to work out. We're able to see all the information. So once more, how are these in the board? I've been a lot of excited with the data in a hurry. Ah, so launched at 147 a.m. five days ago. It's now 2.38. Uh, in 10 minutes, it'll be 13 hours since the launch. Presently, uh, when I wrote this down, it was 2.28. So I've been writing about this for 10 minutes. Um, my Looking assumption in class was that this velocity was perpendicular to this. Well, why not? Um, moon, the Artemis gets out to the extreme of its elliptical orbit because its velocity relative to the Earth was practically zero. When the thrusters were fired, we gave it all this new kinetic energy. Um, it's now 218,300 miles. I didn't really look seriously at that number, but it's below the orbit of the moon. So if you've got Earth here and the moon here, moon and this nice Earth here, here's the orbit. Earth is down here somewhere. Closer to the Earth. From the moon because the radius of its orbit is about 240,000 miles, it's about 218,000 miles. So the moon moving tangent to its more or less simple orbit, nearly simple orbit. We've got our And I fire toward the Earth and be moving like this. But then the two vectors would resolve into a vector. Remember that this one has magnitude almost 3,600 miles an hour. And uh, this one has magnitude around 1,800. It would take that much that amount of that. It's easy, as I said. Uh, okay. So, the conclusion is that the velocity of our here, this is the velocity of the This is the velocity of our. Our is moving away from the moon. Yes. Not sure why we have it moving away from the moon. I don't know if the acceleration is going to be. Sufficient to slow down and put that for the moon. Uh, we'll see in the next couple of hours. Who's going to catch up with the position part? Maybe not. Starts moving back down to the moon. Uh, I'm going to have to look at the data a little more to see what I think maybe is going on. Okay. I've got a little more information. It's now 243. I've got a little bit of illumination of this. In the first place, uh, the data shows that the speed of arc relative to the moon is decreasing. The speed of arc is decreasing. Okay. Now, arc is out here somewhere 
lot closer to the moon than it is to the Earth. As a matter of fact, a ratio that we derived in class, very, very simple ratio of uh, the force exerted by the moon and uh, the force exerted by the Earth. Assuming that the moon is 180th the mass of the Earth, and the 80 that you're going to see here can easily be replaced by the actual result. I look it up, put up in a class. Okay. And the moon has got about 164th the, it, it's got one fourth the diameter of the Earth, uh, which gives it 164th the volume. It's less dense. So uh, 180th the mass is pretty. And it's very easy to see along the first direction. One eightieth of the ratio of the squares of the distance, square of the distance of the earth uh, to the distance from the moon, not the radius of the moon. This is the magnitude of the r vector from the moon to us. So just to be clear, uh, we got the earth, we got it out, out here, we got the moon out here. Um, This is our vector Rm. This is our vector R sub P. And make our totally perpendicular. Uh, our entire cone in this direction, as you can see from this diagram, and you can make your own diagram. So, anyhow, at this point, or at least at the last point I observed here, uh, RP was about 220,000 miles, and RM was about 11,000 miles. Those aren't exact, but it's awfully close. And just to get an indication, that's 20. Squared is 400 plus 85. So this ratio is approximately five, the meaning you have five times as much force toward the moon as toward the earth. We'll talk about this in detail, but that means you've got. The force toward the moon and the force toward the earth, giving you a result of velocity. At an angle, if these are close to perpendicular, not as close as I thought, but still close enough to be approximate. The angle is the, so the angle from here to here be the arctangent of five, uh, or the angle from here to the arctangent of one fifth. Uh, the arctangent of one fifth is one fifth radian, you're close, which is about 12 degrees. Okay, last data we had just a little over an hour ago, maybe not even an hour ago, uh, but that was very approximate data. I wasn't using good data. It gave us uh, about a seven degree difference. So we'll see how that changes with time. Okay, so I'm really interested in what's going to happen to this velocity. Take a look. Let's 
the other speed is changing with time. The speed is decreasing, as you would expect from the directions of all these vectors. Things being pulled back toward the moon. It's moving presumably in a direction like this, it's being pulled back toward the moon. So this speed is changing. So I'm going to take a look. It's been Twenty minutes or more since I started, meaning it's been close to 30 minutes since I got this data. So I'm going to get some more data and then figure out maybe how fast this thing's changing. How fast the speed of the Artemis is changing. Now, the speed of the Artemis will approach its orbital velocity, which I ought to calculate in a minute. Um, so it should approach something not too much different than 1800 miles an hour before it then increases again due to its proximity to the moon. Might think about that. Think about the picture. Think about the vectors. Okay, I've got some new information. It's now 254. So I got this information a few minutes ago. Um, and worked out nicely. Uh, this time is exactly 30 minutes after this time. Now, of course, it's only to the nearest minutes, so plus or minus a minute uncertainty in the actual time, uh, the speed, relative speed of the Artemis with respect to the moon uh, didn't change all that much. Changed from, let's see that I have the speed here, it's 3567. Got that written down here somewhere. I'm not annotating this stuff as carefully as I would if I was trying to uh, summarize all of this because I'm doing it in real time. So I'm putting down the numbers, understanding that this number corresponds to this, but this is the speed of Artemis with respect to the moon. It's all gone down by 30 miles an hour, which means it's going to take, you know, uh, 40 hours for the thing to match the speed of the moon. Just match the speed of the moon, much less pulled in. In the meantime, it's moving further away from the moon, which means the gravitational acceleration between it and the moon is decreasing. Uh, so I might have the picture wrong. Let's see what you make of the data. Okay. Uh, we've moved from 218,300 to 217,738 miles from the Earth. Of course, this is going to allow us to calculate the velocity of art with respect to the Earth. Okay, and I don't think we can do that pretty easily. Um, that's going to be, it's, it's lost uh, 562 miles an hour uh, in 30 minutes. So it's losing approximately 180 miles an hour per minute. Uh, So tentatively, I'm saying, let's check this out a bit. Generation of art with respect to the Earth is approximately the magnitude of negative 600. And it's now 562 miles per hour, 562 miles. So that's actually speed, not acceleration. Don't confuse those things like I just did. And that's over 30 minutes, I think, right? Because you don't want to And that's approximately 887.
miles per minute. Um, this is not right, it's 18.7 miles per minute. That still seems a bit high. This um, is I was completely screwed about this. This is half an hour. Oh, yeah, well, a minute 60 miles. Now. Okay, yeah, that works. Okay, so you know, just do just about this by half hour, please. You got approximately. 1100 miles an hour. That's the reason. I was choosing miles per minute with miles per second, which is 3600 uh, miles per hour, and that was ridiculous. Okay, so a little less ridiculous is reckon So that's 1100 miles per hour relative to the Earth. Um, but relative to the Moon, This distance from the moon has changed from wherever it is, and here somewhere, yeah, 11,515 miles, 12,204 miles, which is about 700 miles, and half miles, 1,400 miles an hour. Now, maybe my okay. Feel like I can put units in these numbers. They're almost simply younger than I am, so let's keep this in mind very much. Okay. Yeah, speed relative to the moon is still a speed relative to the earth. The speed relative to the earth is 35,000. 67 miles an hour doesn't reconcile with the 1100 miles an hour. So I don't know where all my vectors are. Uh, I need to draw a more careful picture, but maybe you can do that. Uh, let's reconcile a little more. Um, and as you can probably tell, I prefer to work these things out in my head, reconcile them, and to plug them into the computer and not understand what anything is. Although, Somebody's a little smarter than I am. Plug them in. You can do this all at once. Okay. Uh, that's the difference between me and a rocket scientist. Okay. Uh, <laughs> there are other differences. Okay. I'm, I'm going to turn the camera off while I think this through. And I've also kind of got to eat something, but let's see who thinks this through first. Okay, it's now 3.06, 12 minutes to I got this data. And just sorting out looking at the data, it appears that R is moving away from the moon at 1400 miles an hour. Speed of the moon relative to Earth is 1800 miles an hour. Speed of art relative to the Earth is 3,600 miles an hour. And we don't know for sure what the directions are, uh, but love the art with respect to the moon, it's about 1,400 miles an hour. We expect that the moon is behind our so that. Our has to be moving in about this direction. That we reason out the floor correctly or otherwise. So that's about 1,400 miles per hour. Suppress the units where you know, just look at the numbers. Uh, velocity of the moon with respect to the Earth is 1,800 miles an hour. Now, this is not a good place to actually detect these vectors. 
and what kind of do it anyway, because they don't all act at the same point. Um, but we've got velocity of the moon relative to the Earth, which is presumably 1800 miles an hour. And the velocity of art with respect to Earth, I have no idea in what direction art is moving. Because these two vectors don't come up to a vector like this, and you can see in a minute that they come and meet. Um, velocity of art with respect to the Earth is about 3,600 miles an hour, which comes directly from the telemetry. Let's just read something. So let's review where these numbers come from. Uh, the 1,400 miles per hour comes from the fact that art moved from a distance of Sure, that's the right one. Yeah, distance of 11,515, 12,204 miles, which is roughly 700 miles in half an hour. That's 1,400 miles an hour. I'm reading the clock, 1233, 1303 is a half hour. Basically, it's calculation from that. I think I could have missed that. Um, I wrote it down. I was looking at it. Doesn't necessarily mean anything. Could be wrong. Okay, you go back and look at it, uh, or at least compare it with what the next we're going to do. Okay. Then uh, the eighteen, the eleven hundred miles an hour. Where, where's my eleven hundred miles? An hour? Okay, yeah, my 1100 miles an hour is a component of the 3600 miles an hour. Um, it's moving closer to the Earth, so that's a little bit of estimation. And the velocity of the part with respect to the Earth. Um, Thirty-six hundred miles per hour. I think this one has to be this direction, and this eleven hundred miles per hour is the rate at which the distance of from the Earth. And getting closer to the earth, closer to the earth is like this. So that would be like 1100 miles, which means that this angle is approximately equal to the arc tangent of 11 over 36, which is approximately 20 degrees. Okay. Okay, well, that's a lot of fun, but it doesn't help me to get the relative velocity, or velocity 3,600 meters per second with these two relative velocities, which I think it needs to be. Um, it's like two legs of the triangle adding up to more than long slope. Violates the whole thing about this is straightest line between two points is a straight line. Oh, no. I gotta eat something. Okay, I'm gonna take some more data and then I'm gonna eat. Won't take me long. Okay, got some new data that I think. You could look at it in terms of at least look at these velocities. The speed relative to the Earth is decreased by about 20 miles an hour in about 22 minutes. So it's still 
changing by about a mile an hour per minute. Um, I did not actually calculate them. Anyhow, I'm pretty sure I said it. Uh, gone down by 30 miles an hour in 30 minutes, gone down by a mile an hour per minute. <clears throat> that looks like we went down by a little under 20 miles an hour and a little over 20 minutes. So maybe the velocity isn't changing as quickly. Uh, A little hard to read that rate of change VA AE maybe is decreasing most quickly. Now there are some uncertainties in where I was in the 25th minute, where I was in the third minute, and how much less quickly. Um, and how close this is to 3517, and how close this was to 3736. Um, there are some uncertainties in that. Um, be easy enough to have on. Um, <clears throat> what else is happening? Let's see, the distance changed by 328 miles. Distance from the Earth changed by 328 miles in about 20 minutes. That's about 16. Let's track my numbers. Here, 328 miles, 16 minutes is 20 miles per minute, which is about 1200 miles an hour. So it looks like that distance is changing faster than it did up here. Um, but the velocity, the speed relative to the Earth is decreasing. Uh, something going on with the attraction of the moon, which is greater still than the attraction of the earth. That ratio would now be um, 217, 12, which is a little less than 10 to 1, be 1 80th of 1,000 feet, 1 80th of 100. Oh, well, 10 to 1, 10, 10 squares 100. Twenty squared is four hundred. Um, so it'd be a little less than five. Um, moon still observing about five times the force as we would expect. It's the, the, the relative distances um, here and here aren't changing that quickly. Um, <clears throat> what else is going on? Distance from moon changed by twenty-four miles in. 20 minutes, a little over a mile a minute. This is from the moon to the moon is still increasing. Make sure we see these on the plate. Still increasing. It's increasing. I'll put this stuff in the table, it'd be easier to see. But you understand what I'm pondering here. You can ponder it yourself and organize it as you wish, if you're inclined. Now, I'll organize this when I'm done. Uh, but uh, right now, I'm trying to think through in real time think about what's happening, just where these things are. Um, I did, while I was leaving, um, see an indication online that uh, the flyby of the moon has been completed. Not sure how you fly by the moon.
when you're closer to the earth in the morning, you get closer to the earth. But there's something I'm not reconciling back to what you're supposed to remember. Okay, so I was looking at how quickly this is the moon is changing. It would change by 30 miles an hour in 30 minutes, about a mile an hour per minute. And here, change by less than that. That's not what I was looking at. I was looking at these numbers. Okay, so that's 11 to 515. No, that's 700. Left from here. Here, this is the moon has a change on that much. If I got that number right, let me just take a quick look at the present numbers. I probably didn't read this number right. It's probably 12, 9, 27. I was never going to organize the data. Look at the moon better. Yeah, that would be more consistent when you expect it to change by all that much. Because it's still about 700 miles. If that is 927. I'm going to jot down the current. <clears throat> okay, well now we're at 42 and 1304. I'm going from the 03, the 42 is a minute, to the 42, 39 minutes, almost 40 minutes. And we went from 12204, 1304, that's a separation from the moon. It's about 800 miles further in 40 minutes. 20 miles further per minute. From here to here was 700 miles further in 30 minutes, which is a little over 20 miles per minute. So that doesn't seem to be changing. And the speed relative to the moon doesn't seem to be changing all that rapidly. I have to break down and uh, organize this a little bit better. Better. These numbers just don't convince me that this thing isn't going to crash and burn, but of course I know better. Um, so I certainly trust NASA engineers to get this part right. It's just in college physics, uh, university physics, lower division university physics at this point. Uh, of course, they're taking advantage of the account of some much smaller quantities like forces due to the Sun, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, even Mercury, maybe. Uh, and anomalies in the moon's gravitation field, the Earth's gravitation field, all that stuff. Uh, okay, I'm going to stop the video. I'm going to take a little while to organize this and see where we are. Okay, here's summary of the data up to some time ago. Uh, had to take a break afternoon afternoon crash and all I do is that <clears throat> to have somebody to bat this back and forth with I'd probably be able to I'll maintain my focus. Anyhow, um, collected the data, wrote it down. I think everything in white here is pretty good. Over here, I think it's mostly 
pretty close. Uh, but all these calculations are done in my head. Still, the progressions uh, appear to be valid. But some missing data here, here, where does that time get you? Observe one quantity that was questioned at the time, uh, and here's another quantity. Okay, here's my time. This is in days, hours, and minutes. And then here are my time intervals, <clears throat> excuse me, in minutes. So that from 420.06 to 422.34, well, that's two hours and 28 minutes. It's 148 minutes. So these were calculated. I think these are probably uh, mostly correct. I did have a mistake on that one. I have an 88, which would be 98. Um, I didn't use it, fortunately. I had to reconcile it with some other stuff. Um, also, one questionable number here. I don't know what this number should have been, but it certainly shouldn't have been a nine, maybe a seven, maybe an eight. Uh, that could be conjectured from the progression of the numbers from here to here. Because what I did was uh, I just went from here down to here. The time interval was 22 minutes, then another 37 minutes, which is not 52 minutes, just 49 minutes. I see there are mistakes. Okay, so it's 49. Um, this quantity and this quantity were calculated based on 52. It won't be a big difference between what we got from 52 to 49. I'm not going to bother correcting them um, because the progressions are still, um, I think, fairly obvious. <clears throat> now, throughout, Here's a picture of Earth, Moon, and Artemis is the accident. And I've got arrows proceeding from the Artemis, and I'll explain those in a minute. But the Moon's orbiting the Earth, Artemis is a little ahead of the Moon. Uh, moon is, or was, catching up to Artemis. It appears that Artemis is moving away from the Moon now. Uh, so we'll see what happens over the next day to the uh, orbit. Uh, still, the ratio of the force attracting Artemis to the moon to the force attracting Artemis to Earth um, is still in the order of five to one. Okay, so we've got five times as much force pulling Artemis this way as pulling Artemis this way. Since the moon comes along here, um, that's going to probably persist. Uh, we'll see how the data come about because I'm conjecturing these positions just from the data I have. I haven't looked at any pictures or anything. So this could be totally screwed up. The one thing about this is uh, to be able to label these things and so forth, I'd exaggerate this distance. Okay. This distance is on the order of 10 to 15,000 miles. This distance is on the order of 250,000 miles. So this distance is only about. 1 16th, 1 20th of this is in reality. So this should be much closer to the moon, which gives you a better idea of it. Got to be a lot closer to the moon to get a comparable force, comparable force. Um, for the forces attracting Artemis to the moon and to the Earth, um, be comparable. If they were this far apart, uh, the Earth force would be considerably greater than the moon force. Okay. This way, not more than that way, which is going to work. Um, okay, anyhow, these are my time intervals, assuming they're correct. <clears throat> RAM is measured in kilometers, it is the distance of the R vector uh, between the moon and Artemis, the length of the R vector. And that vector would go like from here to here, or from here to here, it doesn't matter. Back to go between these two points, really dealing with magnitudes of the force. We know what the directions of the force are. Okay. <clears throat> so these are distances from the moon and kilometers. You see, these distances are decreasing, decreasing, decreasing as it over several hours. And now all of a sudden they're increasing and increasing and increasing and increasing. Okay. Well, what happened sometime between here and here was the fire of the thrusters. He gave this thing a lot of extra velocity. Okay, 
uh, the velocity of Artemis with respect to Earth was down to 185 miles an hour, 103 miles an hour from, you know, thousands of miles an hour, okay? Uh, 10,000 miles an hour at one point, uh, and, and more. Um, then all of a sudden, speed is up to 3,888 miles an hour, up more than a mile per second. Well, they burn the thrusters uh, to change the trajectory of Artemis. It was in an elliptical trajectory around the Earth. Okay, something like maybe. And it's near the peaks, or was before the thrusters, near the um, aphelion of the elliptical orbit, the furthest distance from the Earth. Uh, had the moon not been there, had the thrusters not been fired, we would have come back to this point and continue orbiting in this eccentric elliptical orbit. Well, anyhow. 103 miles an hour, that thing never actually stops. It's always moving, but at the peak, it's starting after it's moving in this direction. Not very fast, it's moving in this direction. Certainly no faster than 103 miles an hour. Yep, this plus is what I think it is, which is how fast it's moving with respect to the Earth. Now, this might just be how fast it's moving away from the Earth. Uh, but from what I know about the time of the firing, well, actually, I don't know what I think I know the time of firing. I think it was 7.30 or something in the morning. Uh, since it was launched at like 1.47 in the morning, that's not consistent with this. Uh, actually, I'm kind of good at something too, but I had some time to know. Yeah, never mind. It is consistent because 7.30 would have been pretty close to this. Much closer to this than this because we have a gap here of about 11 hours. Um, okay, that's a 640 minute count with observations. Uh, I was asleep, and NASA just didn't have any problems, so they didn't bother calling me, so I got to sleep through the night. Uh, okay, that's a joke. Okay, let's see. Yeah. In more ways than one, actually. Now, um, so we have these velocities. Thrusters are fired somewhere pretty, not too far from this time. Um, well, actually, no, pretty close, close to this time. Because it would have been, oh, never mind. They're fired. Okay. Um, my conjecture is the thing didn't slow down much more than this, but maybe. Uh, if this is actually the velocity toward or away from the Earth, then it might start falling toward the Earth before the thrusters were fired in whatever direction they were fired. Okay. Well, now, um, the delta R A M is changing the distance between the Artemis and the moon. RAM is the distance from the Artemis to the moon, and delta RAM is the change in the distance. So, changing the distance in the 148 minutes from here to here was this minus this, negative 5339 miles, if calculated. Um, so from this and this, we're able to calculate the average velocity over this level of the Artemis with respect to the moon. Well, the moon's moving and the Artemis moving with respect to the moon. And we find that um, here it was like negative 35 miles per minute. I'm not sure about that, because uh, I did some other observations that I'm not going to talk about right now it was pretty simple and for a minute see how much the velocity changes typically velocity is changing about 
40 miles an hour in a minute. Um, distance is changing at like 40 miles in a minute. So, like, you know, that's um, 40 miles a minute. Okay, well. This is consistent with that. This isn't particularly, so I'm not sure about this calculation. Uh, I could check that out. Um, should have been close to this because this observation was made before the thrusters were fired, obviously, because that velocity changed drastically for a short period of time. Okay. Anyhow, these are the velocities. Now, what happened is velocity of the Artemis with respect to the moon was negative. That means the Artemis is out here, not moving all that fast, and the moon was moving along here at around 1800 miles an hour, something like that. And the uh, moon was catching up at about 1800 miles an hour. Uh, and 1800 miles an hour is 30 miles per minute. Figure that out very easy. Okay. Um, All of a sudden, Artemis is moving away from the moon. Now, apparently, if Artemis had been left here with the moon coming along, it might have been pulled into an elliptical orbit around the moon, even to the extent that that elliptical orbit about the center of the moon would have intersected the surface of the moon, which would not have been good for the Artemis to crash. Okay. So we had to skedaddle it out of there, maybe. The conclusion I'm getting, and I'll explain in a minute, is that the velocity of the Artemis is spectral. Earth is like this, greater than the velocity, the speed of the Artemis with respect to the Earth is now pretty much away from the moon, and it's moving faster than the moon is. So it's Getting away. Uh, eventually, what will happen is the moon's pull will slow this thing down and pull it into circular orbit around the moon. And the details of that uh, are probably beyond what I'd ask any university physics student in their first university physics course uh, to work out. Um, You got to get into some pretty sophisticated mechanics. Not too much beyond, of course, but somewhat. Okay. Uh, now, what's happening? The velocity of the artist's perspective the moon doesn't look like it's changing much. 25, 23, 23 miles per minute. You multiply by 60. You get 12, 1300 miles per hour. The moon itself is moving at 1800 miles per hour, meaning that the velocity of this thing with respect to the Earth, uh, well, you see what those velocities are in the 3000 mile an hour. Um, 1200 miles an hour, 1800 miles an hour, doesn't even add up. 3,000 miles an hour, and it should be violating the triangle inequality. And I haven't figured that out. I to think about that. Um, so there's some anomalies here, I'm trying to work all this out, work out the backwards. Uh, now, what we can work out here is this is average velocity with respect to the Earth radial. By radial, I mean along the line connecting the Earth and the arms. So here is your VAER, the logic of the suspected Earth radial. And it's in this direction, it's going to the Earth. Uh, it wasn't before it moving away from the Earth as it moved along this elliptical orbit. But now it's moving toward the Earth at 22 
miles per minute, 1720 um, miles per hour. Uh, but then that speed has decreased down to 19, down to 12. Um, so what makes that speed apparently decrease if it's full of the moon? No cells. Well, it's kind of a mystery. Well, I'm not sure about that. I haven't worked it out. Um, it's an equation to see you just have to write them down. Uh, so there are questions here. My main question is the violation of triangle inequality, something that can't be uh, velocity of Artemis with respect to the Earth. Minus the velocity of the moon with respect to the Earth should give you the velocity of Artemis with respect to the moon. And it doesn't appear to be possible from these data, uh, that, or from my analysis of these data. So, some could be wrong. I really should put this in the spreadsheet so I can yeah, put some Constantine, you know. Excel references and play around with things a little bit and look at the pattern of these numbers calculated with better accuracy. Still, I don't think there's any big problem with these numbers I calculated in my head. Uh, what I'm trying to come down to is the direction of this velocity of Artemis with respect to Earth. These 3,800, 3,600, 3,400 mile per hour velocities, since Velocity of Artemis with respect to the Earth, the component of the velocity toward the Earth is much smaller in magnitude than this velocity, 1,320 miles an hour versus 3,600 miles an hour, basically around a third of the velocity. Um, so this is going to be about three times as long as this one. And there, I think. Have to be more or less perpendicular. And I could be wrong about that. I don't analyze. I don't even know how to analyze a lot of stuff in NASA. So this, and you know the details of why they put the thing into the orbit that they did. Still, most of my conclusions here are kind of hard for me to escape. Now that's not okay. So what's going on? I don't know. Let's see what you think. Uh, this will be the end of this video because I can't believe. Okay. Uh, I'll probably add another one later. And I, I've had time to kind of play around with this, do a little sketching, and figure out the uh, apparent contradictions. I'm probably going to do one more set of data. Okay, this data was taken at 5, 15, 17 relative to launch. It's uh, 5.04 p.m. So just this data about two minutes ago, wrote it down, got it with a piece of paper, I'm gonna copy it down. Very easy. Um, this number came out exactly 15,000. Pretty kind of neat for the chances of seeing such a round number. Okay, there were 216, 766. Okay, so the distance from the Earth has changed by only 54 miles. That's not much of a change. That's going to tell me something. I'm, maybe I'll think about it. Uh, maybe I'll figure it out in time to say something. Um, and plus, with respect to the Earth, it's down to 3407 if we calculated that correctly. And the result I got here is reasonable, possible. And this rest, okay, it's 3436. Now let's do a quick calculation. Um, that's 72, difference here is 72, which is 82, 82, difference is 82 miles. 
the time. Let's go ahead and move it down. That's our difference is 82 miles per hour. And it's a positive difference. Um, whereas these are going down before we turn the one up. Well, that is consistent with the pattern of the numbers. Uh, this will be consistent with the pattern of the numbers 34, 36. Uh, unless I didn't see it, because this is kind of at the edge of what I can. Yeah, it's 34.44 now, so it's definitely increasing. Um, okay. Time interval between here and here is an hour and 15 minutes, which is 75 minutes. So to clarify, I did these calculations. I'll go on through 75 minutes. The change in RAM, change in the distance between Artemis and the moon, was 1,524 blocks. If I divide this by this, I get very close to plus 20 miles per minute, which is 1,200 miles per hour. Um, these numbers and parentheses here don't know what else to put on. I don't think it cares. Okay. Now, the change in the distance from the Earth. Let's see what happened here. Well, it didn't change much. Okay. So, some of them are Let's see if we can interpret it. Okay. That's down 54 miles. And we see this downward progression in the component of the velocity in the direction of the Earth. To me, this says that the moon is going to be close and entirely to the back this way. Um, another thing about the moon, the moon's moving about 1,800 miles an hour. And it's At that speed, about 10 hours away from closing the distance. We can't close all the distance because the distance from the Earth. Okay, wait now. This is something I've got to think about. The moon is 32,000, roughly, miles. further from the Earth than this. How could this distance be less than that difference? That disturbs me a little bit. I'll assume I'm start saying something that drifts us more. Okay. Uh, but one thing I'm missing in this picture Here. Seems to be greater than this distance. I have to think outside the box a little bit about it. Okay, we're going to move on. You think about it. I'll resolve it or I'll give up. Um, it comes to a conspiracy theory. That's the way you work when you don't understand something, right? Make up a conspiracy theory to explain it. Hmm. Okay, not all conspiracy theories are false. There are conspiracies out there. But some people make them up and push them. Don't listen to them. Uh, and he's a little discernment. Okay, political comment aside. Uh, and there are conspiracy theories on both sides of the spectrum. Um, so, still want to calculate this. Well, in 75 minutes, it's changed by negative 54 uh, miles, which is about 
negative 0.7 miles per minute. Which is seven sixty or two miles an hour. So we have a consistent decrease in the component of this velocity toward the earth. Doesn't all seem to hang together. Um, a good stuff when you think about it later. Okay, well, that's what we have at this point. Um, questions abound. Things that I've seen is if the moon is 238,000 miles away and Artemis is only this many thousand miles away, how can she be only this far away from the moon? Um, Fairly disturbing. Okay, these numbers are okay because your Artemis was within 5,000 miles of the orbit of the moon. Everything was just fine. All of a sudden, it's 16,000 miles from the orbit of the moon, or only 6,000 miles from the moon. I don't know if NASA's pulling our legs, that's not the case. Uh, or something I'm not saying. So we'll see. 